you're trying to save money by building your own DIY off-grid power system, you'll definitely be familiar with the question of which is best, 12 volt, 24 or 48. Well, I couldn't decide, so today I'm going to build a system using all three. Hey guys, welcome back to the homestead and welcome to the mess. There was a couple of problems with our 48 volt setup and I knew I was going to have to face those problems eventually but I think I've come up with a way of solving them without having to go out and buy a whole load of new equipment. So here's what I'm up to. Without boring you all to death with my opinion of what the best setup is out of the three, I'm going to cover the four problems that we've been having with our system here. Now we're running two different size groups of batteries and you can't correctly charge both sets from the same source at the same time. What happens is the bigger ones suck up all the charge while the smaller ones are left with just a bare trickle. The second problem then is to do with the lead acids themselves. Lead acids do not like being connected up at 48 volts in large series groups. What happens is the batteries in the middle always bog down. They don't get charged properly and they might have a cell drop out here or there. Now this happens at 24 volts as well, but it's a lot less common and it's a lot easier to keep them balanced. Unfortunately, this means that I've had to run balancing cycles a lot more frequently than is actually good for the batteries. To combat the issue of the two different sizes not getting correctly charged, every other week I'd be swapping them over between the big ones and the small ones, which was very quickly becoming a right pain in the backside. Problem number three then is the little generator here. The all-in-one unit will accept a generator as a mains alternative, but because the AC output of this fluctuates up and down, the all-in-one won't allow it to charge the batteries. It will only allow it to run the loads in the house as a, as a pass-through. So to solve that problem, I've come up with this. I'm bringing the 24 volt inverter back into use again. So the output from the generator now goes into the mains input of the 24 volt unit, the mains output from the inverter comes out and goes into the mains input of the 48 volt system, which will hopefully smooth it out and allow this to accept it as a source of charge for the batteries as well as a backup. So it's basically a 48 volt system backed up by a 24 volt system. That also solves problem number four, the wind turbine. The wind turbine is an Istabreeze I-1500. It's a 24 volt. Now I could try going out and getting a 48 volt control unit for it, but based on its performance at 24 volts, I think it would be spinning up mental before we'd see any sort of usable power out of it at 48. So at least with the 24 volt system set up, I can attach the wind controller straight into it and it'll act as a backup for the 48 when the battery bank on the 48 dies. For 12 volts, I had one spare solar panel left and this old pulse width modulation controller that I can use to trickle charge any batteries that aren't part of the system. switch just switches on the panel and that's it I had some of these old junction boxes lying around from years ago and instead of throwing them out I've decided to repurpose them into a housing for these gauges that way I can keep an eye on the bus bars without having to rely purely on the readings from the all-in-one to be honest with you guys I have no idea if this is gonna work it's a complete chance I'm taking Having the 24 volt unit AC coupled into the 11 kilowatt 48 volt unit will solve the battery issue as well as connecting in the wind turbine at a later date. But I have no idea if it's going to accept the generator input once it's cleaned up and passed through the 24 volt. It's a complete chance I'm taking and we won't know until we start the system. Bugger, I hate when they fucking do that. Right, so that's both banks connected up now. There is a few more bits I should really get for this, like a circuit breaker between the AC output and the input here, somewhere in the middle there. I need to get another battery isolator switch for the 48 volt bank, as the one that I have, I've connected up to the 24 volt bank. But there's enough there that it will be safe to use and we can fire it up and see what happens. So, it's 24 volt up and running 
gauge is working anyway it's saying 25.5 so they must be in a good state of charge 48 volt is saying 48.9 which is not great they should be a little higher than that so let's switch on the solar and see what happens okay that's the 1.4 kilowatt array if i can say it properly and that's the 3.6 kilowatt array and both devices are coming to life the only thing to do is to switch on both inverters so I'm going to switch on the 24 first so its output is now active oh look at that straight away the 48 volt come on focus on the 48 volt is picking up the AC input so let's switch on the 48 volt and it's acting in bypass mode oh yes yes oh, oh oh focus phone look it's accepting the 24 volt as an ac input and it is charging the batteries with it even though solar power has dropped down yes that's brilliant guys it's working i'm delighted with that the 48 volt unit is accepting the power from a 24 volt unit so it's operating as a backup and we have the little 12 volt unit there just to charge for any batteries that are out of service that is fantastic so it does seem to be working okay guys so it's now later on in the day sun is almost set the 24 volt system has been working successfully as a backup for the 48 volt system for the last couple of hours but it's time now to fire up the generator and see can i use it to charge the 48 volt battery bank as well as running the loads so let's fire it up and see what happens okay so now it's operating as a bypass generator coming under load there now it is allowing the generator to charge the 24 volt bank okay so it's charging the 24 volt and operating as a bypass but over here on the 48 volt side you can see the voltage is fluctuating wildly the 48 volt unit isn't liking it so it's cut it off Okay guys, so it looks like that was a bit of a fail. The signal from the generator is just fluctuating too much for either of the units to be happy to allow it to charge batteries and run the loads at the same time. It'll allow it to do one, um, and with the 24 volt we saw that it would allow it to charge the batteries on the 24 volt side, as well as acting as a bypass. But when it got to the 48 volt unit, it just wasn't happy enough with it, and it was chopping and changing between one and the other. Now it wasn't a total bust. We do have full battery bank up and running again albeit separated so we have a 48 volt system backed up by a 24 volt system with a 12 volt system as a charger and we can add the wind turbine back in later on when i have enough money saved up to build a concrete foundation and buy an electric winch to get it back in service so i guess that's it i'm going to have to get a voltage regulator for the generator and put it in between the generator and the 24 volt we can go from there but other than that guys thanks for joining me and uh, the mission continues do take care of yourselves out there, and I'll see you in the next one.